So, I was not planning to record this video, but moments ago I was reading this book, and there was one page that caught my attention, and I think is so important for us as developers. This is not that well planned, but I, I feel that I need to share this while it's fresh, because this made a lot of sense to me. So, let me share with you. And by the way, the book is this one, The Checklist Manifesto. You can find it right here. But it's not about checklists that I want to talk about. It's about one thing about our field that it made a lot of sense to me when I was reading this. It's a topic that I have seen in other places, and I think it's important. But honestly, I don't know what that would mean for us as developers. That's why I need to think out loud. So what does it say here? So let me read a few sentences. All learned occupations have a definition of professionalism, a code of conduct. It is where they spell out their ideals and duties. And when we read this, and now I try to map to our field, there's no such thing. There's a set of ideas that we have of what does it mean to be a great developer? What does it mean to build great software? But there's no code of conduct. So let's go a bit further. And it says that they all have at least three common elements. We are talking about that definition of professionalism. There are three main elements of that definition. So let's go one by one. So the first one is the expectation of selfness. The first is an expectation of selfness that we who accept responsibility for others whether we are doctors, lawyers, teachers, public authorities, soldiers, or pilots, we'll place the needs and concerns of those who depend on us above our own. I've never seen such a thing in software development. The closest thing that I think we have is the agile principles when we, we talk about the relationship with our clients, with those that will use the software, but also, I often see a concern with our peers that are technical, those who can read and write code, but often we forget about those that by the end will use the code. In some industries, there's that idea that the client is kind of like a king, right? So if the client says something is is right, and we, we don't have that. So we don't have this thing of having someone that we put up Above of our selves. At least to me, it's hard to identify that happening nowadays in software development. So, second one. Second is an expectation of skill, that we will aim for excellence in our knowledge and expertise. This is the one that I think we are close to, because there's in fact this idea of trying to be better. Doesn't mean that all developers do that, and we don't have a code of conduct that forces us to to do that. But the good news is that there's a lot of people talking about best ways of building software. There's a lot of people trying to push harder to build something better. But we don't have something that means that we need to do that. We'll, we need to try to be better. There's that idea of craftsmanship that is something that I love, that is kind of like an extension to the Agile Manifesto in the way that I see it. It's now that I define how I should behave as a good member of a team when I'm building software, craftsmanship takes to another level. It's about how I behave with others, what I do to keep improving, that the fact that I share knowledge with others. So those are the closest things that we have. And looks like it's more about an kind of like an accident, something that will happen naturally than something that we do it for a reason. Often I have the feeling that those who try to improve, those who try to be better in this field, above all, there, there's many of those that will do it not for the fact of trying to be better in order to, to be according to the first principle, right? So that they will help the end result. Sometimes it's kind of like a pure game. So it, it's so exciting, the idea of solving challenges that code presents to us, that when I learn more, it's like I'm getting new tools to go through the next level faster. And that is valuable. The thing is, I don't think we have a, a North Star something that guides us on 
this journey. And the third one is, third is an expectation of trustworthiness, that we will be responsible in our personal behavior toward our charges. So what happens to us if we do something that causes a big deal? We don't have mechanisms in place for something to happen. We don't have that ultimate responsibility as like a doctor have. If he does something that went well and is in fact responsible. The closest thing that we have seen recently in this field, it was with that in- incident with the Volkswagen, where some developers were charged because of the things that were happening. But it's one of those cases. So they said that developers were the ones responsible for cheating. It is one of those th- cases that it's, it's hard to say that it was a developer, but also the developer didn't have a code of conduct that it he could say, no, I'm breaching my code of conduct. So this might have a consequence for me as well. So in the, nowadays that software is everywhere, it's worth thinking why we don't have such a thing. And let me finish with one thing. Here it says that aviators have a four expectation. So there's those three and aviators, and I would say that is everyone from from a defense department, that is the expectation of discipline. So you know that if you are in the army, discipline is an important thing. So that makes me think if we have also a fourth or a fifth expectation in our field as well. And I would love to hear from you. Please leave a comment if you have any thoughts on this topic, because it's something that I... I think about it, but I I can't find a a good answer that works for me. So sometimes it's quite clear to me that bringing something like this type of code of conduct would make a lot of sense for us to increase our responsibility, to improve um, the image of developers that I believe that with the rapid growth of number of developers and the how much, if we have a lot of demanding in our fields, eventually our image will will not be the best because you keep growing, keep growing, keep hiring at a huge pace. You need to bring new people into the field. And that will mean that there will be more mistakes. So things might go wrong and eventually the community might not trust us. So that that's one of the reasons why I feel it would be worth it to have something like this. And also to make sure that everyone feels responsible for what they do and they know why they are doing it. On the other hand, there's um, a degree of freedom and creativity and craftsmanship and all of that that I'm worried that we've lost it. I'm always worried that these type of things, these type of rules, this type of code of conduct can change the natural way of working. They might be one reason to introduce more bureaucracy, for example, to to bring more processes. And one of the good things in our field is that, in fact, we can move fast, we can change things. We can keep learning, we can keep bringing new things into the software that we build. And I'm worried that something like that will decrease that pace that we all love. So I don't know, what do you think? And this is not my usual type of video as likely you know, but I think it's worth to start thinking about this type of things. And I was reading this and I had the urge to come here and share with you. I hope that at least you got one or two things from this video. See you soon.